cars that go up in value over time, it isn't just because of the performance figures or how much they cost when new, or whether or not they cost an arm and a leg to keep on the road. It's about emotion, the experience only a truly excellent car can give you. And today on Idealist, here are the 15 nostalgic rides that have the best chance of appreciating. I'm Brad, well, and also known as the Financial Cowboy. This is Ideal, like, subscribe, and let's go. The feel of driving an S2000 spiritedly is matched by very few cars in this world. Honda, they just got it right. Its high revving two liter delivers a lively performance, peaking at around eight to 9,000 RPM, which is absolutely exhilarating. The six speed manual transmission knocks off shifts as smooth as butter with the accuracy of a bolt action rifle. And the rear wheel drive platform is ultra playful with its sharp and responsive chassis. Inside, you find a simplistic driver-focused cockpit that further enhances its sporty character. It's a raw, connected driving experience that will only get greater with time, hence why premium examples have already traded hands in the six-figure range. Honda will likely never build another screaming naturally aspirated four-cylinder sports car quite like it, so these are only going to go up. On the low end, you can find them for around 10 grand, while premium examples are six figures now. So if you've ever wanted one, and you should, get one before they climb too high up the price ladder. Two words, Mezger Motor. The Turbo and the GT cars all had Mezgers, while the naturally aspirated lower tier models, well, they didn't, and they, yeah, they had some issues. This 3.6 liter twin turbo power plant was derived from the 1998 Le Mans winning GT1 race car. Mm, that thing looks good. And with 420 horses on tap, it was the fastest street legal Porsche when it was launched, literally and figuratively. Car and driver called it simply intoxicating. The 996 marked a significant stride in design, incorporating liquid cooling and variable valve timing as well as modern fuel injection and turbocharger management. It was a design that allowed the 996 Turbo to bridge the gap between an analog sports car and a tech-heavy GT machine, a blend very hard to find in most modern vehicles. Enthusiasts have learned to love the headlights, and prices are going to continue to trend higher with these impressive water pumpers over the next decade. When you look at the greatness that comes out of Porsche over the last two decades, you can look back at the 996 to see really where it all started. Cheap examples are in the 30s, while premium cars are already over 130,000. And we've linked to all these ideal deals down below in the first comment, so go check them out and see if you can find yourself a deal. The Audi R8 came with two flavors in the Gen 1. You had the V8 and you had the big ol' V10, and they're both special cars. It was the first car that blurred the lines between traditional sports cars and full-blown supercars. Based on the Audi Le Mans Quattro concept, it was first released as a V8, which thankfully came with a gated manual six-speed, and I fortunately was able to own one for a couple years. And then just a couple years later, the 5.2 liter straight out of the Gallardo 560-4 was shoehorned in, giving it a proper V10 power plant. And again, you could get it with a shift-it-yourself manual, which if you want to save the manuals, snag our best-selling Ideal T right up here. Today, it represents the bygone era of manual supercars, and having owned one, it's an amazing driving experience as both a supercar and an incredible daily driver. Now, personally, I'd actually take the V8, as I think it's better suited for the chassis, but if you want to have a unicorn, which I know a lot of you subscribers do, go for the V10 manual, which have already sold for as high as <laughs> 210,000 bucks, and that car had an original MSRP of 167,000. Wild. On the other hand, get a higher mileage V8 six speed in the 60s and drive it for free, or maybe even make a few bucks. And if you want to learn how to do that, we'll check out our free workshop on the Ideal Car Strategies where we go through all of that for you. It's down below, it's free, and it's linked. Okay, truth be told, one day I hope to own a C5 Z06. It's the track bred thoroughbred of the C5 Corvette and last production car to sport the pop-up headlights. The Z06, it's a beast, thanks to its all aluminum LS6 V8 cranking out an impressive 405 horses. Paired with factory shorter gearing, this thing feels right at home on virtually any track. It sticks out amongst the sea of normal Corvettes. And now, the fact that the new C8 only comes with a dual clutch transmission, I think you're picking up what I'm throwing down, because this one, it only came with a 
manual, and it's bound to keep going up and up in value. This is a car that, like the others on this list, just haven't quite had their moment in the limelight. Low-end vets are still a bargain at 15K, while premium examples trade in the 50s now. And we're just getting started, baby. Woo! We here at Ideal love the 350Z, but the one that's poised to trend up in value is the Nismo edition. Well, why? It's rare, with only 1,613 units produced during the 2007 and 08 US production run. These JDM specials get a distinct body kit and stiffer suspension, and that glorious VQ engine cranking out 306 horsepower. It's overall just a super striking package, and with prices as low as 16K and premium examples already hitting 40, gotta snag one before they go up even more. Okay, for starters, the new NSX Type S uses the same advanced hybrid technology used in the McLaren P1 and the Porsche 918 Spyda. Yes, a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 and a three motor hybrid system give it a premium 600 horsepower. Plus the Type S takes it to another level. With carbon spoilers, side skirts, deck spoiler, roof and diffuser, it just looks fast sitting still. It's the most track oriented Acura ever and one that's poised to appreciate faster than GameStop options. Check out this 177,000 MSRP beauty, go for 235K. Now on the low end, you can find them for a little under 200. Not cheap by any means, but sometimes you gotta pay to play. That said, even the non-Type S version, which you can get for a lot less, will still have its day to shine. But right now, they sort of fly under the radar. Okay, this car has been around as long as the dinosaurs, and well, I kind of equate it to an iPhone. It was just a game changer when it first hit the streets in the late 2000s. It really was one of a kind. Known for its robust performance, a twin turbo 3.8 liter V6 that has consistently evolved over the years, it, yeah, debuted with 480 horses, but now has over 550 stock. The R35 GTR is a case study for Kaizen, you know, the Japanese art of continuous improvement. The Tricatessa ETS all-wheel drive system has only gotten better over time, just like your boy. And somehow, it keeps looking better year after year. Again, like your boy. Now, it's been the budget supercar killer for well over a decade. Heck, almost two. And it seems like they'll just keep making them forever. But everything that's good comes to an end. And you can get into one as little as 50K and enjoy it while top examples already command 235K plus. Because yeah, once they stop making these things and everything goes hybrid or EVs, prices will only go up. The H1 was shot into the limelight by the Terminator, who drove the first H1 off the factory in 1992. It was a rig the public never knew that they needed, that came as a four-door convertible, a hardtop wagon, a cool slantback wagon, and my favorite, the very rare pickup known as the Recruit. And because of 16 inches of ground clearance, it could get you further than you ever needed to go off-road and fjord 30 inches of water like a hippo. Designed as a civilian version of the military Humvee, H1 carried rugged appeal that those wealthy adventure seekers just lusted for. And guys, it is just cool. It keeps getting cooler with time. Spend under 30K to get into the beginner examples because prices, they just ain't cooling off as one just sold for $687,000. Ay, ay, ay. This car is pure 90s nostalgia. It was lighter than any SI after it. There is a ton of room in the engine bay, so it's easy to modify and get huge numbers. It was introduced during the glory days of the tuner scene, and we all know it as the blue one. And when a car has that much pull, yeah, no prices are gonna follow. With an Electron Blue example going for 50K, but you can get in the game for under 10, and the chances of you taking a loss on one of these things is next to zero. See? The Dodge Viper was destined for greatness when none other than the infamous Carroll Shelby drove the first pre-production model as the pace car for the Indianapolis 500. And when it finally hit the streets in the early 90s, excitement was through the roof. Well, it didn't have a roof, and it didn't have doors, and it didn't have handles, and heck, it didn't even have windows. Early adopters were in for one of the most visceral experiences in automotive history. Its raw performance and road presence overshadowed its deficiencies for many buyers, because hiding under that ginormous fiberglass hood was a mid-engine V10 built with the help of Lamborghini. And with 400 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque ready to slither its way into your veins, if you gave this thing a little too much Viper sauce, yeah, things would go sideways quickly. But 
that's the charm of the first gens, as collector grade examples have crested 160,000. Luckily, you can still get the same experience for around 30, and if you've ever wanted one, well, act fast, like yesterday, because these things ain't getting any cheaper. Yeah, the Toyota AE86 has developed a cult following over the years, but I think that this Drift King legend is far from its peak. You see, the 86 isn't necessarily fast, but because of its rear wheel drive layout and incredible balance, the driving experience is second to none. Its status was definitely elevated with its appearance in pop culture, most notably the manga and anime Initial D. Us viewers got to see what this car was truly capable of. And what looks like a little econo box to most is the gateway to surreal amounts of oversteer on command for us enthusiasts. It's been hit by the drift tax as prices have crested 40K, but they're a long slide away from the top. Thankfully, with a little elbow grease, you can still get into the platform for under eight. Yeah, we needed some more VTEC on this list, and the Acura Integra GSR is like that cool kid in school who also gets good grades. Under the hood, it's packing a lively 1.8 liter dual over at cam, VTEC engine. And when VTEC kicks in, yo, the engine behaves like it's just drank a few too many five hour energies. The aftermarket community, well, it's plentiful. So you can really choose your own adventure as far as modding goes. And hands down, the design language makes this thing a looker. It reminds us of a time when cars were just simple and fun. And with its cameo in the street racing saga, the Fast and Furious, well, it became a cultural icon. Top examples trade in the mid twenties, which isn't bad but in the next few years, they might be more. That's why this four-door that sold for under nine is a great buy. The Ferrari F355 is a masterpiece from Marinello, marrying stunning aesthetics with exhilarating performance. Its sleek sculpted bodywork is a visual ode to the classic sports car design, and under the hood lies a 3.5 liter V8 engine revving up to a thrilling 8,500 RPM to churn out 375 horsepower, which was, yes, quite the feat back in the 90s and still very impressive today. And oh, the sound. Its flat plane crank V8 sounds incredible. Handling is dreamworthy with a chassis and steering that dance in harmony with every curve. Prices, well, they've already reached a quarter mil for the top F355s, and some have been picked up for as little as 64K. So find a mid-tier example and ride the appreciation wave. All done up, this thing, it kind of looks like a Ferrari. The little Toyota though, it packs a big punch under the hood. The SW20 MR2 Turbo is a 90s gem from Toyota, sporting a mid-engine layout that grants it cat-like agility on the road. Its two-liter turbocharged four belts out around 200 horses, earning it the nickname, the poor man's Ferrari. Sporting a sleek angular design, it embodies the 90s automotive aesthetic with a classic wedge shape that still captures attention even today. Personally, I love the T-top roof option, convertible motoring with the structural rigidity of a coupe. Sign me up. And the fact it's a turbo, it's a tuner's wet dream. They've sold as little as 7,300 bucks and as much as 61 thou. So no better way to boost your bank account than buying one of these today. Yes, this is a contemporary classic. And in my eyes, the E36 M3 holds its ground as a masterpiece, blending the indomitable spirit of the 90s with a timeless mystique. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have the voluptuous over fenders like the E30 M3. And with over 35,000 units finding homes on American soil, it's not necessarily rare, but look for 98 and a half or 99 M3 because those are the special ones. They're the facelift cars with a three spoke steering wheel and command a pretty premium. The top of the market for these is around 50K and at the bottom around seven. So there's definitely room to play and one of the most cars that you can drive at any price point. So which one are you guys picking up using the ideal car strategies? Let us know in the comments below or did we miss one? Let us know as well. Also, if you enjoyed the vid, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on that notification bell if you're new and check out this why you need up here or whatever YouTube recommends you watch next down here. I'm Brad or sometimes known as the financial cowboy this is ideal and promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle.